So let's talk home automation, shopping lists, and how I built an application to meal plan for me. Uh, I like the idea of home automation, and my goal is to one day create a functional Jarvis, and probably call it something like Kevin. Knows everything, very intelligent. Oh. Baby steps. But to better give context on how home automation, shopping list, and my meal prepping app comes together, I need to explain the problem first. Recently, my wife and I were discussing ways to spread our chores around so the daily grind of cooking and cleaning and grocery shopping uh, and more doesn't become the domain of like a single person. We read a book called Fair Play and the author described how tasks have three parts, conceptualizing, planning, and execution. Without going into too much detail, the conceptualizing and planning are the two phases that takes a large amount of mental and perhaps physical burden on a person. This is important because even though I may physically execute tasks my wife has on her plate, because she has to conceptualize and plan, uh, to her it feels like the burden has never left her shoulders. This means that no matter how many chores I physically help her execute, as long as she's conceptualizing and planning, she feels the stress of it and it's as though I never helped. Uh, now, if this resonates with you, I highly suggest that you read this book. Now, as an engineer, this insight was super important because it helped me to focus on the actual issue, which is conceptualization and planning. Now, if I could create a system that could conceptualize and plan for the owner of the grocery task, then it should technically effectively lessen the burden uh, that that person feels. So I decided to explore home automation to see if there was something there that could help. In my ideal Kevin operated house, it would tell me what I should pick up and from where, as well as what I should cook. So I came up with a few requirements. Now the system must be mindlessly simple to use. My wife isn't a tech savvy person and she's quick to tell me if my system is trash. Two, should any part of the system fail, which there will be failures, uh, then there must be a simple, quick analog replacement. My wife will not be debugging, so whatever the system does must be easy to do with pen and paper. And lastly, uh, the system must only use what I have in existence, meaning that I don't want to go out and buy new gear or have to pay for new subscriptions. It just needs to work with what I already have laying around or what I'm already subscribed to, or if I have to subscribe to something, it better be free. Now, the first thing I wanted to do was address the shopping list. Now, currently, my wife wrote this by hand and she places the shopping list on her fridge or on the board really. I already have a subscription to Todoist which is like a powerful to-do application so I asked her if she was willing to keep track of the grocery list on the app instead of paper and though she prefers the physical mediums uh, she was still comfortable with the app because she's already used it before and she didn't mind switching over. Now switching to the app opens up two new possibilities. The first one is that now we can view the list from anywhere which is super helpful because my wife has definitely forgot the list at home on more than one occasion. And the second is the possibility that we can programmatically modify the list based off of real world events, which is key. More on that later. Now, using the app only partially helped with the conceptualization. If the system were to be really helpful, it would need to fill the shopping list based off of the food I planned. Or even better, it would plan the food for me and tell me the groceries that I need. Now, I know that there are apps and websites out there that could probably do this, but remember, rule three. I'm not signing up or paying for anything new, unless it's free. Besides, I think it'll be a fun challenge to try this myself. With all of that aside, I think the features that the app must have should be pretty straightforward and I think I can knock it out in a few days. week later, I built a simple React app that allows users to store the recipes, the ingredients for those recipes, and the stores where to find those recipes. Uh, the user can also specify if the recipe is like breakfast, lunch, or dinner, snack, or some combination of the above. And the user only has to add the recipes only once, and it's saved in a database using MongoDB. Now the cool part is, during the meal planning phase, right, 
typically my wife would go into a cookbook and then or she has like a mental list of all the things that she's cooked in the past or she looks at the past calendar stuff and sees what she cooks and then she just chooses out of that like what are we going to cook for this next week um so to take all of that off her plate this app will now shuffle the list of recipes that she puts in. You can have a list of 100. Instead of you having to look through all 100, it'll just shuffle and it'll fill out breakfast, lunch, and dinner snacks and just shuffle all the meals and give some kind of combination. And if you don't like it, you can reshuffle. If you like it, then great. Or they can manually choose from the recipe book stored within this app. And once they save their selection, they can press sync and the ingredients for all of the recipes will be added to Todoist. And since we shop at different stores for different ingredients, the app will ensure that the ingredient is added to the appropriate shopping list. Now this system is stupid simple to use and works well in the ecosystem that we currently have. I already own like a RAID NAS system, so I'm able to host the application locally without the need of exposing my hastily cobbled code together to the outside world. And what's really cool is that this web app Todoist combo significantly reduces the burden of conceptualization and planning and shortens the amount of time it takes to meal plan. My wife doesn't have to learn anything new besides my app, of course, and since the system is designed to take over the mental effort of planning and conceptualizing and should the app fail then only the mental effort is added back to the task owner and things instantly go back to the way it was from before so where does the home automation comes into play well that's technically what i'm working on and exploring now and i'll probably make a video about my findings separately from this one because I'm still researching all of this and I'm still trying to figure things out. But during my research, I stumbled onto Home Assistant and realized that there's a whole world I could explore with the potential to solve other real world cases. For example, something I looked into was using NFCs to add, our, add items to our grocery list. Uh, our pantry is organized with labeled acrylic jars, and by adding NFCs to the jars, if my wife and I wanted to, uh, to add this particular item to the shopping list, or if we see that it's low, we could just use our phone and just tap it, and then it would be instantly added to the shopping list. But this method was problematic because uh, we're house divided. Well, she has Android, I have Apple. Uh, bleh. So setting up the NFC tags would mean that I'd have to set, trigger automations or set up the automations on each of our phones, which isn't scalable because it means that it doubles my work every time I need to track new foods or any food items, to be honest. However, Home Assistant helped me to bridge that gap by allowing me a more fine-grained control over automations. And since it's platform agnostic, it would work with both Apple and Android. But of course, things can't be that simple. In this case, my wife's phone has a case on it that obstructs her NFC reader, so she can't use NFCs at all. So of course, like the next idea that I had was maybe using the camera to scan barcodes or perhaps print out a QR code. But what I really would like is like a small low powered weight sensor that can trigger automations based off of certain weight thresholds that are breached. In any case, I'm still looking through and trying to figure out how I can get this to work. And as I figure it out, don't worry, I will let you know. Unless if I fail, then I may not post anything. I don't want to look bad. Anyways, uh, maybe this helped. Maybe it didn't. Who knows? Um, if this is something that's interesting to you, maybe I'll just post a code somewhere so you can see how it all comes together. Um, and maybe have it for yourself. Okay, bye. Thank you.